Hello everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're back in my craft room here at Random Acts of Crafting. Welcome in. If you're new to my channel uh, and you like what you see and you'd like to see more of the projects, the cards and things that I do here, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and you can set how you want to receive your notifications. If you are one of my faithful subscribers, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, taking a part of time out of your life to come and join me, and hopefully you will get inspired, and you'll learn something new along the way. Okay, um, I'm working again today with the Edith Club Kit, but I'm bringing in some elements of my own. Uh, I am bringing in a piece of um, red cardstock and a piece of basic black, and I'm going to um, I want to kind of coordinate these with some of the um, cut aparts in here, and I want to show you how you can use the cut aparts and make them fit to um, give you that effect that you want. And I'm hoping that this will be um, inspiring and also uh, lend um, some ideas on how you can make things fit when they don't seem to fit. So that's that's my goal with today's um, project. Okay, I had originally cut this piece out because I thought that this would pair so pretty with either one of these, but I kind of had a second thought. Um, first of all, before we go any further, let me let me show you what I want to do with with this particular card. We're going to do a fun full card and the first thing that I want to do is um, I'm, I'm going to make a frame out of that and I'll show you how to do that. But before we get started I want to cut this cardstock down um, to the card base that we're going to do and this is going to be a super fun full card. And what we're going to need to do is we need a piece of cardstock that's going to measure ten and a half by five and a half. So I want to cut um, five and a half this way because we're going to need the ten and a half this way. So let's go ahead and cut this at five and a half. And we're just going to slice this down. And then we're going to cut this to ten and a half. Well, we know this is eleven. So let's just take a half an inch off of it. That's the easy way without having to pull your arm out. Now we will have to pull our arm out because we're going to do some scoring. Or we can bring our traditional score. So we're going to put it in our scoreboard on the 10 and a half inch side. And then we are going to score at three. Make sure you get your bone folder in right into that groove or your styling tool, whichever you use. Three and a half at um, six and a half at seven and then at ten. Now that's all the scoring that we're going to need to do on this piece. So I'm going to move the scoreboard out of our way. What I want to do now is I want to fold and varnish all of these creases. Now when you do this, make sure that you get your edges as even as you can. That's going to be crucial in this type of fun fold card. Usually your creases are very important in any type of fold, but especially in a fun fold card. Everything has to fold properly in order for you to get that exact uh, look that you want. So nice folds, another really nice fold, making sure everything's lining up even. And then the last one is this one little tab right here, which is crucial because this is going to fold to give us that fun fold. This is actually going to glue to here. And we're going to have pretty much like a little box card that's going to be so cute with a window in it. So the next thing we need to do is lay it out like this and on this side where you've got that um, half an inch to your left, you want to lay a circle die and this one is about just a, 
of just a hair over two and a quarter, right out of two and a quarter. So I'm going to lay it about midway. I want about an inch from the top. So let's see what we have here. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit so you can see if I can measure the top. I'll tell you what, let's turn it this way. And I want this to be about an inch from the top. So that looks good. And I want to center it so I have about a half an inch on each side. Maybe not quite a half an inch. Okay, then we've got three eighths of an inch on each side. So I'm going to I'm going to put it back here because I definitely want it to be one inch from the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a pencil mark right there, and then I know that I want to line that up right up to that mark. And then you can center it here, and once you get it where you know that you want it, about like that, then you can take your little sticky notes or you can use some um, low-tack tape. I love to use these little post-it notes because they work really well. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine and you'll see then we're going to have a really cute little window that we're going to use. Okay, and now we're going to remove these little pieces. And we're going to reveal our window. And that looks really nice. That's exactly what I wanted. Now the next thing we're going to do is I want to make a really fun little frame to go around this. And I think I want my frame to be red. So I am using a scallop um, die. And I'm going to lay that down on this little piece of red paper. And then I'm going to lay that same circle die inside of the scallop. And once I get that centered up in there, just like I want it, I am going to tape this down as well. So I'm going to hold that right there. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to tape that down using that same sticky note. And I'm going to run this through the dial machine. piece that I wanted on my cutting plate. But this piece is what I was wanting out of this. And see how I cut that out? But you also have another round circle. So I have a black and a red. And I can probably use those on another card. And I was playing earlier, so I have a white one as well. So we can take this off of here. I'm just going to lay my dies there in case I need them again. And I'm going to use some art glitter glue, and I'm just going to put a very fine line of glue around here. Uh, you know what I forgot to do? No, let's see. <laughs> I'm not going to glue that down yet because I forgot that I wanted to put a pattern paper on here first. So I'm going to glue this down and then I'm going to recut this hole and that I'll show you how, to, how we're going to do that. If you make the mistake, what I should have done is put this down first and then cut my hole and it would have cut out of both. But since we um, made a bit of a boo-boo on that, let's see, I'm going to use this piece. I'm going to put my... Um, 
did I do with my tape runner? Here it is. I'm just going to use a little bit of this snail and I'm just going to put some little pieces along here. You could use glue or you can use a tape runner. Whatever works for you. Now I am going to put this down, getting my nice little border edge around it and I want it to be evenly distributed so I am being very careful. And there we go. Now see we've got that little hole there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that right in there and cut that out. And I think that will cut I think that will cut perfect. We're going to hope so anyway. So I'm going to use my little... I can feel it drop in, so I'm pretty sure that that's going to work for me. But I'm going to tape it down just to make sure. Maybe one more over here, just to assure that it's going to go through like it should. And this is a way to fix if you make that mistake and you get ahead of yourself like I just did. That's just a very sure-fired way to um, be able to fix this so that you can still use your piece and you don't have to trash your cardstock. Nobody likes to trash the cardstock. All right, let's take this off. And yes. That worked perfect. Now it did cut just a little hair of the black, but see it's minute. I mean that's not enough to worry about. So I'm going to throw that in the trash and then we're going to turn that over and this is going to be our focal point in our window on this card. Remember this is going to go over like that and this is going to come up this is going to be the front of our card. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put this red piece as our background. And that's going to give us a beautiful little red area right here. But we want to decide what we want to put in there. And this is where I wanted that little barn to go, I think. Or do I want the stockings? All right, let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to cut some of these pieces into, or I'll tell you what, before we go any further, let's go ahead and get this piece adhered around here because we're going to dress up this edge and see how nice that's going to look on top of there. You could have also done a black because, or you could have done the plaid. Um, so many options with this paper because it is gorgeous. Edith, you did an extremely wonderful job with this paper pack. I love the designs. I love everything about it. So now what I'm going to do is, and I'm using liquid glue on this because I want that wiggle room to be able to get this down perfectly where I want it. And don't worry if you get glue on it. It will dry, it will dry clear. So now let's make sure... Okay, there we go. That looks very nice. I'm getting the effect that I wanted. And now, like I said, we want to work on the inside here. But I'm thinking I want to do an embossing folder. Um, eh, maybe not there. That's not going to show too much in there, so maybe not. Um, yeah, because the only thing that's going to show here is what we decide to use here. I love those stockings and I love this little cutout piece right here. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's cut this off. And I'm just going to take a regular pair of scissors and I am going to cut this out. You can do this on your trimmer or you can do it with a pair of scissors. It's really totally up to you. I'm just going to use my scissors just to make it easy. And I'm going to cut this little green strip away. And 
and now I want to take that die that I know is that same size and I want to see if we how much of this we can get. It looks like we can get it about there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. And it's not going to get it all, but that's okay. We're going to um, we're going to make this work. We're going to actually use a background behind it, maybe something a little bit bigger that's um, maybe something similar to that color. Let's cut it out and see what we get. Alright, so I got this die cut and this is what we have. Okay, it did cut it off right there and it cut it off at the bottom. So now I need to decide what I need to do behind it. So I'm going to use that same, I'm going to use this very same die. Or, you know what we could do? We could use the pieces. Let's see if we can make that work. These were the pieces that were cut off the side, but I don't think Nah. We're gonna do something different. Let's see what it looks like inside. I know I want to pop it up and let's see, maybe I want to put it on a piece of white. Let's use that white circle and let's glue it on here. And see that kind of camouflages the um, the fact that it's separate. So I'm just going to take some glue. There's always ways to get around things. Now I'm going to bring this up because I want this to be perfectly even on both sides. Just like that. Now we have a nice circle to go right inside here. And we're going to pop this up. So I think what I want to do, I want to make sure that I'm getting it exactly where I want it, which is right there. Make sure this is squared up. Okay. So what I'm going to do to make sure I have the right placement is I'm going to make a little, just some little pencil marks like that on all four sides so I can see where I need to put that. And I want to put dimensionals on the back of this. So we're going to go into our card kit here and we are going to use some of those to pop that little circle up right here on the inside of our card. And I think that little stocking seam is going to be so super cute inside there because it's going to coordinate with the paper on the outside. So I want this to be popped up quite a bit, so I might even double my dimensionals. And if you need to double your dimensionals, just put, down, put them down where you need them. And I like to use enough. I don't want my card to feel like it's going to fall apart. So I'm going to pull these off. These little, these little dimensionals are really a nice size. And if you ever need smaller ones, you can always use a pair of um, Teflon coated scissors. I, wouldn't, I would not advise to use a regular pair of scissors on anything sticky, uh, unless you have a pair that you dedicate just for um, just for your um, adhesives. Alright, I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay another adhesive right over top of this. 
And the reason I'm doing that is I want it to have that extra pop of height. So all I'm doing is building up the height. And by doing this, you're going to have double um, dimensionals. Just another way to give your card just a little extra um. So now I'm going to pull these off again. A little extra work, but you know, the fun of making a card is all of the little special things that you do when you're putting it together. So, you know, take your time. Enjoy the process. We do not have to rush through making cards. And I think as crafters, many, many times we get um, a little ahead of ourselves and we will find ourselves wanting to rush through it. And I think we cheat ourselves out of the, the beauty of making a card. Okay, so we're going to pop that down right about here and I'm looking at my marks that I put and that looks real good and yes that's going to be perfect all right so this little card is coming together really nicely and I could not be happier with how this is working now remember this is going to be our inside and this is going to be the outside of the card now I am going to add a little scallop border here just to come over and cover that the next thing I want to do is put some adhesive along this point right here and I'm just going to use my tape runner uh, and I'm going to put one line of adhesive let me get it going the right direction just like that and then I am going to bend this back and I'm going to sit it right into that score mark and I'm going to bring this side up to it so make sure you're directly into your score just like that and then bring this up to it and then once you get it, then you can bring it down and press it. And press it back that way. And now you've got your little fun ball. Isn't that cute? So cute. And there's your little dimension down in there. How pretty. All right. Now I want to use, I think I want to use this plaid on the front. And the reason I think I want to use that, I'm trying to decide if I want this little barn, maybe on a, and I don't want it on red. Maybe I want the red and my little barn maybe on this, just to kind of coordinate everything together. How cute would that be? I also like that Merry Christmas right there. That would be so cute on the front of the card as well. So let me think about this. I'm going to run this through the dye machine because I want to. Um, I want to use a snowflake. Um, I have a snowflake embossing folder and any snowflake embossing folder that you have will work. This is mine and I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it right in the center. Get it nice and straight and close it and then I'm going to run this through my dye plates. Did, um, I did turn that over, but look how beautiful that embosses. Gorgeous. We are having some major storming here today, so if you hear any thunder booms or whatever going on, 
it's um it is storming like crazy here this morning uh, we are under flood watches every which way so many accidents on the road i've been listening to the news a little bit this morning and oh my goodness this is all part of that tropical system that has circled around and around florida and finally came up and hit and it is devastating to say the least okay that's going to be the front focus on our card and i'm going to go ahead i'm not sure what i want to do here though so let's wait and see i'm wondering if i want that noel or if i want that barn i'm loving that noel so i think i'm going to cut this out again i'm just using my scissors because they are working for me um, some people are intimidated by their scissors but I say make friends with them because uh, they're one of our quickest and handiest tools in our craft room. Now I've got all these pieces cut apart but you know what I can use these. Oh this is pretty too. Mm. You know what? <laughs> I am loving this. Let's see. Let's see if we want to put that on there. I think I'm loving this. You know, I'm always so in indecisive. Let me let me think this over, and I'll come back and uh, decide exactly what I want to do. Um, what what else I want to do inside this card um, to make it totally beautiful and what I want it to be. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I think that uh, cutting this out with that oval die, and this is a stitched oval die, and you can, whatever you have in your stash, just find what works for you. And I used that, and um, I went in and looked for a sentiment, and I, I found this one that says, Warm wishes from our home to yours. And I thought, how cute that would be on a little white banner down here. So I am going to go ahead and stamp this, and I'm trying to decide if I want to do it in red or black. And I am really leaning toward the black. So I'm going to go into my inks, and I'm going to pull out my very favorite sentiment ink, which is my Versafine. And I've got a little idea of what I want to do with that Merry Christmas, so I think we're about ready to get this card on the road, on the... Um, right, I'm going to bring out my little stamp and pierce mat. This mat works wonderful for photopolymer stamps. And I am going to stamp this kind of right here. Uh, about like that. So let me grab a stamp block. And I'm just going to grab one that I think will work. And then I'm going to tap, 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 tap. And then I'm going to stamp this right in the center. Very, very pretty. Okay. And then I think what I want to do is... Um, get my trimmer out because I want to trim this. I think I want to trim it. Yeah, let's go ahead and trim it and then we'll decide exactly what we want to do with the edges of it. But I know that that's about a quarter, so I want to come over about a quarter past the top of it. I think right about Maybe right about there. Okay, we got a little bit more at the bottom, so I'm going to take off about an eighth of an inch. Okay, I got this um, completely um, um, cut out using that oval dial, like I told you, and I went ahead and stamped that warm wishes and I trimmed this down so that it would be 
like that. And all I've done was cut it off even on one end and did the dovetail on the other. And that's a very simple process. I just cut up the middle and then I cut from each corner up to the middle. And that gives you that beautiful little dovetail. And I also, before I put this down, I went in and found some snowflakes from one of my die sets. And this is actually, that's a stamping up die. But I thought, how cute would these snowflakes be on the front of this card? So we're going to put those down on there as well. So let's go ahead and put the front of our card together. The first thing I want to do is put this down kind of in the center. And I'm going to use the dimensionals again because I want this card to have a nice amount of dimension. Since it's a box card, it doesn't really matter because we're going to have to make a special envelope if you mail this or you would have to hand this card to someone, which is always a great way to give a card. Um, so I'm just going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. And let me get my little pick. And I'm going to try to pull these off like this and make it a little bit easier on myself. That one did not want to play, but we got it. Okay, so I want to put this down about like here. And I want to center that, making sure I'm getting it even on both sides. And then this I'm going to put down just like that. And I want that tail just to stick out very, very slightly. But I'm going to glue this directly down just using some uh, art glitter glue. And I want that to get tucked underneath there, like I said, just a wee little bit. And just press that down. And now for these snowflakes, I want to put one at the top. like so, and one at the bottom, like right about there. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I love this. I love the way this card has come together. Now I'm going to use liquid glue because I had embossed this piece and that's going to get in all those little nooks and crannies and hopefully give us a good um, stick or adhesion to our card base. So I'm going to, I'm not going to skimp, I'm going to make sure I get enough of glue on here to make sure that it sticks. And now what we want to do is get this framed perfectly. Just like that. And if you're wondering now, where would I sign a card like this? It's a very simple solution. You can take a panel and put it on the back of this card. And I had a panel cut. What did I do with it? Well, you know what? We can always cut another one. I, oh, I know what I did. I cut my snowflakes out of it. <laughs> hey, baby girl. Why, why do you keep on me? It's okay. I was getting ready to come and wake you up. My baby girl just woke up, so give me just a minute and I'll be right back with you. All right. I'm sorry about that, but my granddaughter, who y'all know is staying with me this week, she just woke up and she had to come find Gammy. So I am going to go ahead and glue this panel. And this is cut the same as these other panels were cut which is uh, two and three fourths by five and one quarter. So the same as this one, the same as this one, and we're going to put this one on the back. And this is where you can write your a personal message, or if you want to, you could stamp another um, holiday greeting. Totally up to you, but for right now, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to glue a piece on the back. And then, like I said, you could write your message on this piece. You could do stamp it or whatever your desire would be. But we're just going to go ahead and glue this down just like that. And now we have a place to put our message and what a beautiful little holiday card is that. I think that turned out super, super cute. 
I think anybody would be thrilled to get a card like this. Oh, I was going to use this Merry Christmas right here. And we don't have a Merry Christmas on here. Y'all know I don't like to do a Christmas card without it saying Merry Christmas. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a little fussy cutting around here. And I love to do this little wiggle cut around a sentiment because I think it looks very attractive and it just uh, adds so much to the, the sentiment of the card. So we can just do this all the way around here, around the holly leaf, and just across here. And just do that little wiggle back and forth when you're cutting. And this hides a multitude of mistakes. So if you have trouble fussy cutting, this is a great way to fussy cut without um, having to worry about everything being straight. And look how cute that is. And then we can just glue this right here, and we have our Merry Christmas right there on our card. And we can now call this card completely done. And what a great way to use our paper from our e-club kit for December. Or November. I'm sorry, this was her club kit for November, but it has the December theme. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, anyway, this card turned out beautiful. I love it, and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did making it, and I hope that you would try something like this. Be sure to check the um, description below. I will give the measurements and the score lines, and then you can basically make this card any way you want to and decorate it any way you like. So another little way to use your club, your Edith, your E Club kit. Hope you enjoyed it. God bless you and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven, for He is so worthy of our praise and our honor. Until we craft again, I love you all. Bye bye.